Doing examination, Mais il est indiqué qu'après analyse, analyse were lying. on a estimé que ces gens mentaient. As for the three witnesses who testified, Quant aux trois témoins they qui ont déposé, ils disent avoir vu un groupe de Jarai arriver à Okonseng et se faire they ensuite emmener. Les témoins concordent à affirmer que cet événement s'est produit en 1978. Et deux d'entre eux conviennent qu'il a eu lieu précisément au mois de février ou de mars de cette année-là. Par conséquent, This event Selon toute took place vraisemblance, several months cet after événement the a eu lieu au moins plusieurs mois après l'envoi du télégramme en juin 1977. Il n'a pas non plus été établi du tout Se, que le témoin décédé Chiam Se sur l'attention was talking about the group of Charai mentioned in the telegram either. sur lequel l'accusation attire l'attention aurait parlé du groupe de Jarai mentionné dans le Télégramme. Bref, il n'existe rien qui établisse un lien entre ce Télégramme et ce que disent les témoins au sujet des Jarai à Okonsen. Le Télégramme mentionne précisément les témoins, mais ne parlent que de façon vague de quelques personnes. It clearly cannot be concluded beyond reasonable doubt that the telegram and the three witnesses were describing the same group of Jarai people. In any event, while the witnesses speculated that those Jarai were killed as they never saw them again, none of them actually witnessed any killings. Likewise, the telegram simply mentions the arrest of people. And specifically, the telegram shows that the reason for the alleged arrest of the 209 people was their suspected involvement in espionage. Again, let me emphasize it. Those people were coming from Vietnam. They were allegedly soldiers. They had weapons. They had US-made backpacks. They had a Vietnamese map. Their arrest was therefore legitimate and based on objective criteria. It had nothing to do with their purported Vietnamese nationality as such. And as I just said, in any case, the telegram did not indicate that they were actually killed. Turning to another point, what's more, Your Honours, this allegation, in fact, Do you hear me? Yes? Okay. This allegation, in fact, does not en fait, make any sense. It shows, instead, the lack of cultural knowledge of the co-prosecutors. Because even if these Jarai held Vietnamese nationality, which has not been proven, Jarai people are neither of Vietnamese race nor ethnicity. As you know, Mr. President, Your Honours, The physical features of Jarai differ significantly from that of Vietnamese, and they are an ethnic minority with a distinctive language and culture. This event, therefore, has nothing to do with the alleged racial persecution of the Vietnamese or the genocide against the Vietnamese. While we're at it, nor does it have anything to do with the grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions charged, since those people were objectively seen as Vietnamese soldiers conducting espionage activities on Cambodian territory. And finally, the telegram is also insufficient to prove that Nun Chia was aware of the alleged killing of those people. Indeed, as I've stated, The telegram only mentions that local authorities arrested suspected spies and could not have alerted Nun Chia. Oh, I'm sorry. The telegram only mentions that local authorities arrested suspected spies and then confiscated their weapons in what, and I must emphasize this, was a time of war with Vietnam. In such a time, such measures were fully legitimate and could not have alerted Nguyen Chia of any crimes committed against the Jarai people. Your Honours, this concludes the section on Okan Seng security centers. 
And now I will finally move to Phnom Krah Security Center. And considering the dramatically limited evidence offered in relation to this site, I will be very, very brief. Your Honours, Phnom Krah Security Center was defined in the closing order as a complex located in Autonomous Sector 105 and comprising three separate facilities. Phnom Krah Prison, Office K-11 and Office K-17. Now six witnesses were called to testify on this site. Disturbingly, however, Mr. President, only two of them actually provided evidence directly related to Phnom Krah Security Center. All the other witnesses testified about events that occurred in Autonomous Sector 105, but that are not related to the Security Center as such. Therefore, it is clear that those witnesses' evidence is outside the scope of our case. Now, the only two witnesses who did testify that they were detained at Phnom Krah Security Center say that they were detained for a month at K-17, which, as you may recall, is one of the three facilities alleged to be at Phnom Krah. Therefore, the co-prosecutors only have evidence at all on one out of the three facilities of the security center. They do not have evidence on Phnom Krah prison or on Office K-11. Now, in order to try to save the relevance of the witnesses' evidence, the co-prosecutors desperately try to extend the scope of Phnom Krah Security Center to different locations. Notably, the co-prosecutors showed a keen interest, which they emphasized in court this week, on the unsworn account of civil party Sun Vut. Unfortunately, Sun Vut himself told the chamber, as you may recall, Your Honours, that he was allegedly detained at a location and I quote, not near Phnom Krah, unquote. Thus, his evidence is clearly unrelated to Phnom Krah. For that reason, the co-prosecutors shamefully pretend in their brief that Phnom Krah Security Center comprises, and I quote, other buildings in the surrounding area, unquote, in addition to the three facilities specifically identified by the closing order. Mr. President, Your Honours, they should clearly know better than this. The closing order is what defines the scope of this trial. The co-prosecutors cannot extend it as they wish when the evidence doesn't say what they want it to. And the scope of our trial, as defined by the closing order, when it comes to Phnom Krah, is strictly limited to the events which took place at the three defined facilities. I say again, Phnom Krah Prison, Office K-11 and Office K-17. This means that you must reject all evidence that is unrelated to any of these three facilities. Even more unfortunately for the co-prosecutors, the only two witnesses who provided evidence within the scope completely undermined the co-prosecutor's case on Phnom Krah. Firstly, these two witnesses described the reasons of their arrest. They explained that they were related to Kam Phun, the Secretary of Commerce Office K-16, who was suspected of treason and who had been found dead in Phnom Penh. Moreover, 17 people related to this same Kam Phun flew to Vietnam under unclear circumstances. Mr. President, these two events, together with the escalation of the armed conflict with Vietnam, led to chaos in autonomous sector 105. To stabilize the situation, local authorities had to take exceptional measures, including the close scrutiny of people part of Comfoon's network. Thus, those two witnesses were legitimately and lawfully detained at Phnom Krah Security Center on a temporary preventive basis 
to give the authorities time to sort things out. Second, these two witnesses confirmed that they were released after a month. This confirms that they were kept under surveillance just for the time it took to calm the situation in the area. Nothing more. Third, importantly, the witnesses stated that they were never mistreated while in detention. They further described detention conditions that were con consistent with conditions in prisons in the DK at the time, and what they described clearly fails to reach the level of gravity required for a crime against humanity. And finally, Mr. President and Your Honours, none of the witnesses heard ever saw even one single killing at Phnom Krauss. Some witnesses provided speculative evidence regarding people being sent out of the security center. However, we have absolutely no evidence as to what happened to those people. They may just as likely have been released or sent to a different location. At the end of the day, there is simply no evidentiary basis to find beyond reasonable doubt that killing, extermination, or enforced disappearances occurred at Phnom Krauss. Thank you, Mr. President, Your Honours. This concludes my presentation, and I'll now hand the floor to my colleague, Victor Coppe, to discuss the last security centre in our trial, which is obviously S21. Thank you. Good afternoon again, Mr. President. <coughs> um, I am mindful at the time. Um, Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. I do not think Je I will finish. Uh, my presentation on S21 je vois le temps, mais je ne pense pas que je puisse terminer ma présentation problem, um, sur le centre de sécurité de S21. Continue, uh, Et je pourrai continuer lundi matin. If that is the case, then le it, is, uh, oh, it is appropriate. Si tel est le cas, because today is Friday. Alors, uh, and uh, I think uh, it is a proper time if you think that you want to continue uh, on Monday. Um, it's been a long day, it's been a long week. I would not have a problem uh, in, in finishing now and starting fresh on Monday morning. But may I then ask, uh, Mr. President, that we get a bit more time um, Monday morning after 11.30. Uh, un so peu plus de temps lundi après 11h30 uh, uh, pour ne pas perturber notre calendrier tel que prévu. Le président. And uh, on Monday, uh, we will give a few more times for you to conclude your arguments and presentation oui, since you want to you know, uh, present in detail for the chamber. Um, let let me be um, wise and, and um, decide that we will continue on Monday S21. Um, I think if we have 15 minutes after 11.30 on Monday, we should be fine. Et si la chambre so peut nous accorder 15 minutes lundi après 11h30, nous vous en serons reconnaissants. Bah, uh, Peut-être qu'on peut bah, clôturer uh, ici et aller jouer votre week-end. Le Président, demande autorisée. Merci. Le moment est opportun. And the chamber will resume its hearing on Monday, 19 June 2017, starting from 9 a.m. And Lundi, next Monday, the chamber will continue to hear the closing Lundi, arguments in K002-002 by the 
the first team for Mr. Nguyen Chia. Please be informed and please be on time. Security personnel are instructed to bring the two accused, Nguyen Chia and Kieu Sam Pong, back to the ECCC detention facility and have them returned into the courtroom next Monday before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.